Burgess here and welcome to Adventures in Regression Therapy with my colleague and team member Monique Glover. Today we're going to talk about ancestral trauma and uh, what this basically is and how we work with it. Um, in regression, when we're doing regression work on any issue, remember the concept of regression, the model, all of our issues come from locked in feelings and emotions from past traumas. We want to find out where the traumas are in the past that are causing the issue now and release those traumas. And in regression, we work in three areas. This lifetime, and most of us carry baggage from this life, past lifetimes, and our ancestors' lives. These are sometimes called the genealogical or inherited traumas. And it appears if a person is traumatized in the life, if they don't release that trauma, then the trauma can be passed down. Sometimes it's like it's in the genes and it comes down to subsequent generations. Now it doesn't always come down in every single generation. Sometimes it will skip one or two generations. And even within a family, let's say there are three sisters in a family and there's some ancestral trauma from the grandmother, it may only connect to one of those three sisters and the other two, it doesn't affect them. So what we're doing in regression is our aim is to go back into the ancestor's life and relive the trauma. Now, what this means from our client's perspective, often they are actually reliving the trauma as if they're in their ancestor's body, looking out through the ancestor's eyes and feeling what the ancestor felt, which is quite remarkable. And it's a little bit similar to when we're in a past life. And we're in the past life, in that body, experiencing things as though we are that person all those many, many years ago. So some clients experience it in the body, what we call in the first person. And some clients, they are experiencing the ancestor's life as if they're very close to the ancestor. So they're sort of seeing what happens and picking up on the ancestor's feelings. And that can be just as, that's just as uh, valid as a, as a session when they're in the first person. And when we talk about ancestral traumas, we mean going back through the bloodline. So these are traumas we inherit from our parents, our grandparents, our great grandparents, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Generally, and this is a generalization, these ancestral traumas go no more than about seven generations back. However, Certainly Monique and myself have had clients who their ancestral trauma will go many, many generations back before that and has been affecting so many of the ancestors as it comes down through the line. So that's the background. That's the theory, if you like. And it's fascinating therapy. We even have quite often, but not always, some clients who, let's say they've experienced a trauma in their mother's or father's life or a grandparent's life they may actually tell one of the parents after the session and the parents will actually say, how did you know that? Yes, that's exactly what happened. And it can be something that has never been talked about before in the family. So this again validates the reality of this. And the strange thing is, is that ancestral trauma, to my understanding, is the only part of regression therapy which is scientifically provable where they've done tests, I think, on mice and rats to traumatise a mouse or a rat. And then they found that further down the uh, genetic line, um, ancestors of the initial rat are being traumatised by the same thing. Mm. So um, it, does, it does travel down the ancestral line. But often I think it's, it can be a genetic thing in many cases, although we get the very unusual cases where it actually isn't in the genes and it's almost like an energy that is passed down to subsequent generations. So, uh, so that's my sort of preamble. Anything you want to add on that at all, Monique? And because uh, what I'd like to do, if you would, if you just yeah. share, if you got, a, have you got a client uh, case you can share with us? Yeah, I think you what you um, had mentioned about it being this sort of energy sometimes too is interesting because I had a client where it was, I think we were you know four or five generations back, and it wasn't a direct relative it was one of her great 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 aunts so genetically it wasn't it wasn't you know going from mother and down like that and she's like no it was something else it was you know my my sister um so it's always interesting when that happens when it's not 
directly yeah. gone, but it's this energy that comes through from different branches of the family. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It can be so strong yeah. and so potent. Yeah. Um, and of course, when we do the regression, it can be so powerful to clear this stuff. Because mm. it means we're working again on the roots of an issue and the issue starts to get better. Mm. Mm. No, I have a client. Um, it was actually a really interesting uh, bonding experience for her and her mother because she ended up going into her mother's um, earlier life as a teenager. Um, so I always find it interesting when we're not going too far back and especially when these relatives are still alive. And like you said, you can talk to them about it after and get confirmation um on this particular client were working on her migraines and she had gone back to a time in her mother's life as a teenager where and she was at this party and she was feeling good and confident about herself and then there was this um group of girls these you know mean girls as we would call them that um were not talking very nicely about the mom and kind of ruined this whole experience for her and that was the energy we were bringing through and as we know sometimes it has nothing to do directly with what we're working on that there's here's the migraines here's this experience it's not like her mother hit her head and it makes logical sense but there's this connection somewhere the subconscious has connected this for us and maybe we don't need to um always logic the reason why there's you write this kind of tangled wire between here and here and we're trying to use our conscious brain well well how does that make sense how does you know her being ridiculed at this party have anything to do with my client's migraines but it did reduce the migraines at the end so all we have to do is trust the subconscious knows um more than we do about um what needs to be worked on and this was a story she was never told and she had gone back to her mother and was telling her about this experience in our session and her mother just looked at her like she was crazy how how did you know and it's such a it's such a little event too obviously a little event that made a big emotional impact in her mother's life but wasn't something that was documented right like a birth or a wedding or something like that um and her mother was just in awe that she knew all these details and she could still to this day so showing what an impact it's had on her to this day, as an adult, her mother remembered that exact party and those girls and how she felt in that scenario. Gosh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wonderful, yeah. wonderful. So you say this A to B, B is the problem, A is the cause. Quite yeah. often it goes from A to B very easily, but sometimes, yeah. as you say, it's a tangled wire that comes to B and we can't say yeah. why <laughs> this is this. doesn't matter. All we do is release A, B gets better. Mm. Yeah. Uh, I'm just thinking around this as well. I'm just one of my clients. Um, she um, went back into her mother's life. I'm going to check my notes actually because it was quite an in-depth session. As with when we do regression, um, we will regress back into any one or more of five areas of our lives. So, mm. if we're going back into an ancestor's life, it may be the trauma is in the ancestor's adult life. In your case there, your clients there, was it was in her adolescence. Obviously, we do a lot of childhood work, clearing traumas in our, our ancestors' childhoods. Mm. Uh, in this case, my client went back into her mother's birth, so her mother's time at birth experience. And as we, we know, we do quite a lot of rebirthing for our clients in this life. But in this session, it was about reliving the birth in her mother's life and uh, she saw herself, um, she was in an old-fashioned sort of uh, operating theatre. Nurses were around wearing old-fashioned clothes, and they were shouting at each other, shouting at the mum to push. Mm -hmm. And the mum was struggling very hard to push. And she said, I feel stuck. So my client is actually in the body of her mum as the baby. Mm -hmm. I feel stuck. I'm sort of halfway in, halfway out. My um, Half of my body is free, half is stuck. I feel very trapped and very claustrophobic. Um, and I've got a really bad headache. And then she said something, and she started to move her head around. And she said something is metal is on my head and it's pulling and it's pulling. And then and her head started to move around from side to side. And then she was 
she was out she was born and she she was relaxed and she said i feel all very floppy but my mother isn't there and of course what we usually want uh, as soon as we're born is to get past to our mother but she said my mother isn't there. there's an older gentleman i think and a woman my grandmother i'm being held by my grandmother and she said i'm realizing she said my grandmother is there's no love from my grandmother she's just doing this out of duty i don't think my mother's coming back and the man is a soldier and he's crying and obviously what had happened is that her mom had actually died as a result of the birth um and this the death of the mother was held against uh, my client's mother by her grandmother all through her life she blamed her all the time and she didn't give her any love she just brought her up um without any affection she kept and, and in the life as the child as, as my client became her mother as a child she said there's no joy I, I'm, there's no joy in the life i'm just existing I, I have to be good because i'm being told i'm lucky that someone is going to look after me um so you know that was very powerful experience for her and what happened then is um she went into her mother's life as her mother gave birth to her so my client is then her mother giving birth to her as the baby and she said um it's this it's forceps again they're using forceps mm. and as her mother she said i'm feeling very drained it's a very difficult birth it's like my birth and i'm losing blood um and, and they have to give her blood afterwards and then the baby is born mother is okay but she said i don't know how to be a mom i don't know how to be a mom and my client then spontaneously went into her own birth just after the birth when her mother wasn't holding her her mom wasn't holding her she said i just i'm not wanted i, I don't feel good enough i'm not wanted and she then realized she said i've closed myself down because i've never felt safe i've never felt safe and i've closed all of my feelings down i do this all the time i shut myself down i don't cry i just shut myself down and so this energy that had come down from her mother and her mother's mother you could say all the way down through to her had affected her throughout the whole of her life about shutting her emotions down especially if she's in a a difficult relationship um and she had so many learnings from that so not only we did we release the energy of her mother's traumas um but also we released the energy and she got this understanding for her of one reason why she's been like she has been and so what about the other relatives in your experience do you find um for any of those relatives that are involved like her mother do you find that they receive any benefit from this as well, well or does it depend? That's a good question. You know, that we, it's, a, it's one I've never been able to truly answer. There are some therapists who would say mm. um, if we're working to release trauma that we've inher inherited from our mom mm -hmm. or our grandmother, then when we release that, they will get the benefit. Mm -hmm. And there's a part of me that understands that and agrees with that because obviously energetically we're very connected to our parents and grandparents so if we work on ourselves as we heal there has to be some form of healing to them mm -hmm. however my more psychotherapeutic take is that we all have our own original pain work to do mm -hmm. and therefore really her mom has to do her own pain work her own therapy work in order to fully heal um, but certainly I think there is some healing will happen for that ancestor. And there is also this concept more esoterically, mm -hmm. if we're working on an ancestor who died, who's already dead, um, so maybe five generations back or three generations back, um, and we're working for them, there is this concept that they are healing even though they're in spirit. Mm -hmm. And of course, the shamanistically, uh, they would say, you know, Native American shamans would say that our ancestors are always with us. And therefore, if we're doing some work now to heal ourselves through them, then they will get some healing in spirit. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's more esoteric, of course, but um, it's a good question, Monique. It may be that these ancestors are getting healing as well. And I mean, directly, if your client ever chooses to become a mother herself, then 
she's breaking this pattern that she's not going to pass on to any future generations because of the work that she's done. Yes. And that's the other thing with these patterns can sometimes come down through the generations. Mm -hmm. uh, and we suddenly realize why, why I have done this at this time in my life, because my dad did the same at the same time in his life. Mm -hmm. And it was a trauma for him. And I'm now following that same pattern. And so yeah. again, that understanding can release the pattern. Mm. Yeah. I think it's also interesting because it allows the client in the session to have this different perspective of people in their family that they haven't had um, the ability to. Um, I remember hearing a story about, um, I think it was uh, someone had gone to, you know, one of their parents' funerals and all these people were sitting there speaking and he was sitting here thinking, oh, well, I didn't know that. I didn't realize that my dad had this side and this side and this side, because he, as the child, you only saw this one side. Um, and so my client, um, she had ended up going into her uh, grandfather's life. And um, she's actually been really interested in kind of tracing things in her, her family tree. And so she has all these great memories of her grandfather, but from again of that perspective of a child a child and her grandfather but never as kind of a man and a businessman before she was born so she had ended up going back um, to kind of his earlier life when he was this high-powered businessman and traveled a lot and very much um the the head of the household right this kind of the very stereotypical have to be the man of the family um suppress the emotions down, um, everything like that. And she kind of got a bit of a peek behind the curtain um, of what was really going on that he wasn't able to show. Um, so this client in particular, we're working on um, anxieties and fear around flying and something that comes up when these anxieties and panic attacks surface um, is kind of a closure in the throat. Um, so often just a very physical feeling of the throat being closed up and an inability to swallow. And before we went into our grandfather's life, we had gone through several past lives, um, one which involved flying, another one where she was actually executed by beheading in the past life. So again, having to do uh, with the throat. Um, and this grandfather, we had gone back to a time where his niece had died in a plane accident. And so not only were we talking about the flying and that was a direct correlation like we had talked about before, sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't. Um, this was curiously a very direct correlation with the plane, but also him processing the grief and the trauma around this big tragedy in the family and the inability for him to express those emotions as being this kind of head of the house and this man. And even in the beginning, she was talking about when it happened and he was going through shock that he went out with only the men in the family, that the men of the family met up at this pub together to, to drink. And this was kind of the way they didn't really talk about it. They just all sat together and, and drank. And then he had to, he had to go on. He had a wife and children and he had to go, back to work and he flew all over the world for work and then she had gone into a time where he was traveling for work after his niece had passed and this experience of being in the plane and all of a sudden this panic started to rise in him and the throat had started to close up and how he pushed that down with drink and not we're not talking about excessive drinking but just pushing it down with having a drink. I'm on the plane. I have to do this. You know, I have a high powered position. I have a family to take care of that. I don't have time to, um, to get emotional about these sort of things. Um, so she relived a bit of that experience and what was really going on emotionally for him that none of the rest of the family ever saw. Um, yeah, as well, some other things. But the big thing was just all the pressure he was under, that he was under so much pressure. And he was the eldest of seven. And he was talking about how he took care of his 
his family and you know how he takes care of his mom still and just this immense pressure and heaviness his whole life so it wasn't only about the incident with the niece passing but all these other pressures in his life that he was never able to fully open mm -hmm. up about and my client at the end you know she was really really touched and really emotional about it and she said I would have loved to know this side of him that I would have loved to know this yeah. man that I always kind of got this compassion from him and she said oh it makes it makes sense now with everything that he had to deal with yeah. in his lifetime so it's kind of it's almost bringing you closer uh, yes. to that relative as well even though he's not alive anymore it brought more um, understanding I yeah. think to her and yeah. why yeah. he was the way yeah. he was yeah and it cleared up things for her in the throat. So after she felt, she felt an immense release during session in yeah. the throat. She felt a physical, you know, physical pressure kind of coming up in the throat, almost like a, like a pop. It was just very, very kinesthetic, very physical in her body that something was coming out of the throat. And after just this lightness and uh, post-session that week, she had done things that in the past would have made her feel anxious. She's kind of pushing herself um, to keep going with this and to try things that would have made her nervous in the past to, to see if we're, where we're going. And yeah. so she's been doing these things that would have made her anxious before. And um, since these sessions, the throat issues haven't been coming up mm -hmm. at all. Yeah. yeah. So you yeah. had the double whammy there. <clears throat> One uh, was the release of the trauma from his body from his energy field and also the understanding this is why he was and this is where some of my fear of flying is coming from mm -hmm. and that also is a, is another healing process as well as we know mm -hmm. so well, that's really good excellent mm -hmm. stuff yeah. uh, i just want to share a quick story a client who went even further back so we, we're talking about at the moment we're talking about recent ancestors mm -hmm. so we'll start sometimes clients go way way back many generations back yeah yeah and this client was uh, she went back four generations back into the life of a maternal great great grandmother mm. and um she saw the grandmother as a child and she went into the again into the grandmother's life as the child and they were very poor it was just poor living in a mining mining village in england mm. so they were proud people but living a very frugal life um, seven children, you know, to about seven, six siblings, um, a mother just giving birth regularly. The children just had to work. So from an early age, and she, she said, I'm about seven years old and I'm having to bring the coal in and I'm fed up of this. I'm fed up of working. And the mother just put them down all the time, just work, 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 get things done. Um, and there was no joy. There was no love there. It was just very utilitarian existence. And in fact, as she came into her teenage years, she just got married just to get out of the home environment. Um, and she'd always wanted, then she started to give birth, so she had children. Um, and she wanted to bring her family up in a higher standard that she'd experienced. So she worked very hard as an adult um, in order to have money to send her children to school so that they could be raised to hopefully get better existences when they got older <clears throat> excuse me and so we worked through that we also went through the death as well we went through that ancestor's death the great great grandmother's death in an old age and a relief really it'd been a hard life and my client then realized at the end of the session this is what i'm saying with the understanding that comes through that's where my poverty consciousness comes from she said my fear about money it's been there for all my life all my life i'm anxious i'm worried about money that's where my poverty consciousness comes from and so therefore two things there one was releasing the energies from that great great grandmother that were in my client uh, causing her blockages <clears throat> and also uh, having that understanding okay that's where this comes from and that understanding very often just by itself clears the problem helps the client to release the problem mm -hmm. so you know these are just amazing stories i mean i had another client whose great great grandfather was or great grandfather was in the nazi 
Party in the Second World War, and he was involved killing people, doing horrible things. So she actually went into his life, and we have to do a lot of work on his anger um, because he was an angry person. He'd been forced to join up and forced to do these hideous things. Mm. So often what we do at the end of an ancestral session, we send love to that ancestor, wherever they are in the universe. We send them love. Um, and that's also quite a healing for our clients as well. So, and it's just, as we know, Monique, it's just damned powerful therapy. Yeah, yeah. You know, if it didn't work, we wouldn't be doing it. So, yeah, you know, yeah. And as I said at the start, I just think it's so fascinating. Well, it is, it really is. And being able to share these stories with your family afterwards, there's something really yeah. special about it as well. But the past life stories, of course, are always really intriguing but um some of the bonding that happens afterwards is really yeah. special as well very much so yeah yeah okay okay thanks so much monique that's fascinating thanks for sharing your stories uh, and i hope uh, you good people have enjoyed listening to us and uh, keep tuned in we'll uh, keep sharing our thoughts on regression uh, as we keep going thanks very much for watching and lots of love to everybody bye for now bye, bye. bye. Yeah.